Italy. Land famous worldwide for its food and heritage. If there is something that makes us special, it's our love for cooking. Mine comes from my mom. I remember back in the days, me and her making lasagna for the whole family. Hours and hours of cooking and preparation that sadly will soon become just a memory. Do you know why? Because in the future, we're not going to cook anymore. A 3D food printer will do the job for us. You simply need to load all the ingredients, turn it on, and that's it. Homemade lasagna ready in less than 10 minutes. And that's not all. The minced beef of the lasagna of the future, guess what? It's also going to be different. It will not come from a cow, but from cells grown in a laboratory. We call it cultured meat, and it's actually real meat you cannot distinguish from the one you're consuming today. So, do you see yourself eating in such a way in the future? Well, before, before we start panicking, let me tell you more about this story, okay? So, this is how we make food today. Nothing new, right? Intensive farming accounts for more than 80% of the total farmed animals. What's funny is that most of the consumers are actually against this practice, but they still buy and consume meat and dairy on a regular basis. But what are we actually bringing to the table? Well, just to name a few, climate change, deforestation, and disease outbreak. Basically, we are trying to render efficient something that is inefficient by nature, namely growing animals to produce food. Some may say that going vegan is the best solution we have, and I agree. Following a plant-based diet is the most conscious choice every human could make in order to save this planet. But how many people are willing to take this step and how much we can make this shift at global scale? Because history shows us that for humans, meat means wealth, and with developing countries, raising their economies, consumption is expected to triplicate by 2050. So yeah, the apocalypse will come, my friends, because population is growing at an alarming rate, resources are diminishing, and food production must increase dramatically to fill the demand. We need to make radical changes in how we intend food production. Much progress has been done in the last decades on alternative meat and dairy. And by alternative, I mean the use of different ingredients, such as plants, insects, and algae, to mimic animal-derived products. Plant-based products are very successful on the market today, but there are still some limitations to overcome in order to turn them mainstream. For example, plant-based beef. The flavor is still slightly different from the original one. And on this, we did an interesting project on insects. Insects are a super sustainable protein source, and we discovered that if we process them in certain ways, they can also provide meat-like flavors to plant-based beef, making them closer to the real ones. So, instead of being disgusted, you should really give a try. The taste is just great. In the case of plant-based dairy, instead, the products overall taste good, but they lack of one thing, creaminess. And on this, there is a startup in the Netherlands we are working with that is using sunflower oleosome, which is a specific type of fat present in the seed, in order to solve the issue and make delicious, creamy milk alternatives. So, from my perspective as a food scientist, the goal is not just pushing consumers to eat less meat, dairy or eggs. What really matters is uh, deeply understanding all these alternative ingredients and combine them in a way to create products that consumers really want. And today, what people really want are products that taste great at an affordable price. As simple as that. But with technology, today, we can actually aspire to something more. What if we completely remove animals from the equation 
of making real meat, real eggs, and real dairies. Well, if you do so, I think that the resignation letter that animals will write us will look something like this. I mean, it's fair enough, right? After all this year of inter intensive production, I really think they deserve an holiday. So thanks a lot, animals. Enjoy your vacation, and see you. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the 3D printed lasagna for a moment. Now, I don't know, probably we'll still cook in the future, so relax. What I, don't, what, what I know, actually, is that all the technologies that I mentioned are already out here today with startup and research institutes improving things continuously. At the University of Wageningen in the Netherlands, a research team is studying how to produce casein with precision fermentation. Basically, they are teaching to a yeast, similar to the one that we already use to make beer or wine, how to turn nutrients into casein, which is the major building block of all the cheese we love. In Paris, a startup is producing foie gras with cultured meat. Let's not forget that traditionally, foie gras is produced by force feeding, a practice that more and more consumers are not agreeing with anymore. To make it simple, they take cells from a duck without arming it, of course, put these cells in a bioreactor, and let them grow. Duck meat is then created and then turned into a foie gras. So imagine an old age cheese made without torturing cows, or a foie gras, which is ethical and still maintain all its French touch and heritage. To me, this is what these new technologies are all about at the end, creating the exact same product we love, but with an harmless process for the planet and for the animals. Of course, it will take a few years for this product to get to the market. However, how people will react to this radical change is already a big question mark. Indeed, in a recent study, we discovered that 57% of the respondents considered cultured meat as something unnatural, which may indicate that they feel more natural the way how food is made today. Let's talk, it. Let's talk about it, OK? So let's take chicken. In poultry production, one of the major scientific milestones of the last century was the discovery of the vitamin D. The meat industry realized that if you supply vitamin D to chickens, then you can keep them confined all year round, making intensive farming an opportunity. Before that, rearing chickens was only a seasonal practice and definitely not a must thing. What's natural about this? Maybe in the future, it will not matter what is natural and what is not natural. But what is really relevant is the outcome. Because with cultured meat, we can actually produce the same chicken breast without killing any chickens, but with 90% less greenhouse emission, 90% less land use, and almost 90% less water use. Because tradition is to guard the fire, not to worship the ashes. Which means that whatever is a tradition today is a tradition because it was an innovation in the past. In Italy, we do have lasagna because the Romans, when they came back from ancient Greece, they brought back the laganon, which was an early type of pasta dough. At the very beginning, lasagna was totally different from today. And indeed, it contains some strange ingredients such as fish or pork belly. Only when tomatoes arrived from the Americas, then we could start thinking about lasagna. Bringing tomato here, and turning them into a stable sauce, that was the applied food science of that time. So it's always about tradition, since at the end it's always about innovation. And what's relevant, at least in food, in my field, is that innovation can regain that virtue to solve problems that really matter. In the past, we applied science to lock animals up, maximizing productivity. In the future, we can still apply science, but to let them free forever. All with no compromise on taste, flavor, and tradition. So let me ask you this. What is still not convincing you about this new beginning? People need to understand that behind these disruptive innovations, 
There is no mystery. But only other people. People that best of all do care about the well-being of this planet. They are people like you, or even like you, or even like you. I'm talking about scientists, professionals, and researchers, and even entrepreneurs, all with different ages, backgrounds, and stories, that at a certain moment of their career said to themselves, this is wrong. We must do better. We must create a better food system. As you can see, in my life, I've met many of them. And trust me, if the future of this planet depended only on them, then there wouldn't be anything to be worried about. Enemies are somewhere else. Try to recognize them next time you go to the supermarket. Grazie mille.